want to talk to you about my company today. So I'm the founder of L Drive, um, a mobile app that is set out to disrupt the driver education market by providing driving lessons at your price. <clears throat> so uh, in terms of the story behind L Drive, um, when I was learning to drive, I was really frustrated with the experience that I had in my driving school, um, including the high costs, lack of amenability, and generally finding it difficult to engage well with my instructor, who was chosen at random by the driving school I approached. And I immediately came across this problem, which was that the driver education market is flawed and that the outdated industry is in need of a huge shift. And currently of 750,000 UK, UK learner drivers, only 48% of them pass for the first time. And currently, learning to drive costs just over £1,100 on average. And this, this figure is only based on the fact if you pass for the first time. And finding a curated instructor yourself to fit your ideals is a near impossible task. So I then left and moved to my cousin, who's an independent instructor. And he recently himself left a, a driving franchise. And during the time that I had my classes with him, um, he spoke of his struggles working in a franchise but also working independently. He was really struggling in finding students to teach and to also make consistent income. This is mainly down to you know, a lack of exposure and heavy costs to promote his services online in such, a, in such a saturated marketplace. So for 40,000 instructors like my cousin, it's really difficult to maintain their businesses and their income. And currently of their lesson fees, driving school instructors would only earn 30% of their earnings due to other expenses that they'd have to pay for. And even if they do turn independent, which is the general trend nowadays, as shown by my cousin, they would still spend over five and a half thousand pounds annually just to promote their services online, you know, with SEO reach or social media. So the industry, you know, in itself is aged uh, and very weak. And it's not really caught up to both markets modernistic needs as the world becomes more mobile reliant. So if you look at independent instructors, um, whilst they uh, come a slightly less cost, they still have very, very little exposure. And driving schools, whilst they have great exposure, they still come at very high cost to the learner. So this is where L Drive comes in to fit these needs, to reinvent the driver education industry for the digital generation. So I'll give you a, a little uh, backstory as to how I came about uh, with this idea um, and who I am. I always had a sort of interest um, in creating problem solving mobile apps. So when I was 15 years old, I actually created a, a separate mobile app called EcoMummy, um, which was a carpooling app designed to help parents share and ease the school run process between themselves. And EcoMummy received over 10,000 downloads received national press attention here in the UK and also received endorsement from Prince Charles um, from Prince Charles with the Prince's Trust for his contribution to carbon offsetting. But what I really loved most about it was the fact that uh, I created a product to adhere to mine and my parents' personal issue when I was traveling to school and then suddenly became a nationwide result for so many parents around the UK. Uh, and that's, that was the biggest value to me. So with this kind of proven success, my ambition with L Drive is to further disrupt learner driving, likewise with mobile technology. Um, but first I want to point out before I talk about the business in itself, that we're not a driving school and that we don't want to be. Instead, we are a mobile platform and L Drive allows 750,000 UK annual learners to find, book and learn driving lessons at their prices all in one place. And for 40,000 approved driving instructors to teach lessons on their terms, including by service, prices, and schedules, at wide exposure with no overhead leadership or franchise fees. So this is in the view of both markets together achieving their objectives. Learners to cut down the costs on passing their, on passing their tests and instructors to earn more business cost efficiently. So if we go back to this figure again, the cost to learn to drive is no longer going to be over 1,100 pounds. But with L Drive, it will be less than 500 pounds, as we are introducing a new monetization strategy, which is variable pricing. And no longer will instructors earn just 30% of the earnings. But with L Drive, as many expenses are removed, we only take a small 10% commission, and therefore instructors will be able to earn 90% of the earnings. A huge incentive for them to join. And then finally, no longer will they spend over five and a half thousand pounds to promote their services online. 
But with the old drug, it will be absolutely naught because we take care of their promotional activities and all they need to ensure is that they're rated as highly as possible on our platform. The higher that they're rated, the more they'll stand out. It's honestly that simple. So if we go back to this graph again, this one-on-one -on -one graph in terms of where we will fit in the industry, this is where LDRI will be. We offer a service of low cost to learners and great exposure to instructors for the first time. It's a win-win situation. So in terms of the products, um, these are the products that I've devised, the learner and an instructor app, both of which will obviously coexist with each other. And the apps are expected to release on the app store in the fourth quarter this year, so very soon. Um, and it's said to be very exciting. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking that you guys are here more to know a bit more about you know, my journey in coming into Kent um, and how this whole you know, idea has kicked off from the ground. So when I arrived at university to pioneer business studies, I found myself in a minority almost immediately amongst my peers because I remember we had, our, we had one class with our lecturer, um, Adam Smith, who as Rebecca mentioned, is the entrepreneur in residence uh, at the University of Kent. And he asked us to raise our hand for either the two following statement options. So the first statement was, I want to work for a big, well-renowned corporation after I graduate from university. The second statement was, I want to start from nothing and work my own way through many obstacles to the very top. Now, probably unsurprisingly, out of 20 students in our seminar, 90% put their hands up for the first statement. Um, but what really stood out to me was the huge contrast in interest, you know, that 90 to 10 ratio. Um, because I always found myself in this category, and I'm sure you guys do, you know, having signed yourself up for this, um, for this webinar. You know, I always wanted to persevere in my own journey, to take risks in life, to face the good, but also the very bad days. Um, to stay up at night, you know, working on my project whilst the majority were asleep to begin their systematic 9 to 5 job call the next day. So I immediately classed myself as an entrepreneur. And this is where Aspire comes in. Their project group always empathizes for those who take a different part. And I became known to them almost immediately and I was really humbled with their openness to new ideas. So I had the idea of l in my head for such a long time, even before I actually joined university. But it was actually only in my final year when l came to fruition. Uh, with Aspire when I won their 2019 business startup journey, having pitched the idea to a panel of industry experts. And since then, I used the investment um, upon the development of Eldrive's product, which you've just seen. Um, and I've also, not, not just that though, I've also received useful marketing and uh, financial advice for the business by Rebecca, um, the University of Residence, Adam Smith, uh, the investor in residence, Karen Winton, um, and also some of Aspire's network, including Akash Agarwal, who Rebecca just mentioned, who's a world-renowned uh, investor and advisor who works with tech companies in literally the tech hub of Silicon Valley in California. And he was, he was really good because with his, he has a very upfront Silicon Valley mindset and uh, he really annihilated my business model. But it was in such a useful manner that I took so much away to kind of shift the business model, to then improve the business, which didn't require such tweaks as per his suggestions. So all together with all these resources and amazing people, Aspire really helped me begin the validated learning process. I can see more, you know, probably more importantly, an appropriate scaling plan of the business. So in terms of where l -Drive is now and what are our future steps, um, we're currently in the process of gathering a team and I've onboarded eight intern undergraduates actually from the University of Kent. And these guys are helping me execute the company's go-to-market strategy. And their roles are very diverse, um, entailing from product development, design, marketing, uh, sales, support, uh, legal work, and, and content, um, and content written content as well. Um, so it's such a diverse role and then, you know, together, we're really working well to get the app off the ground. And as I mentioned, we're planning to launch in September of this year, which is really exciting. We've also been recently nominated by Aspire to represent the University of Kent in Santander University's prestigious Emerging Entrepreneurs Programme. And Santander have actually invested over half a million pounds in UK businesses with their, with their incubation programme to, to cover what they call the four M's money, marketing, management, and uh, motivation for a startup business. Eldrive will partake in their acceleration program, which is aimed to provide 
a unique educational experience that will help the company for investment readiness to get grips with that with data and also uh, CRM, customer focused, um, you know, customer focused marketing. And then we'll have a final stage of the program in September where there'll be a pitching final with up to 30,000 pounds in equity freeze seed funding, which I'm applying for, but also the opportunity for business mentoring and to take on a fully funded intern. So it's said to be an exciting journey and without Aspire, I would not have had this opportunity um, to do this as a scheme. So um, yeah, if you would like to stay in the loop with my business, you can follow at L Drive app on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all with the same handle at L Drive app. You can also visit our website, um, www.ldrive.co. Um, if any of you are thinking possibly of driving very soon, or maybe you're a driving instructor, maybe you're, you know, your parents are driving instructors, you want to take advantage of our offerings. Um, but either way, I just want to give a final shout out to Aspire for everything that, that they've done at this stage, especially to Rebecca. Um, they've really helped me a lot. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see how the journey goes. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you uh, so much indeed. I love hearing the L Drive story. It's been so exciting to be a part of it um, as it's developed and grown. And great pitch for sales at the end. Well done. It's the <laughs> true entrepreneur in you. Um, great. And we'll um, hear from our other two student undergraduate entrepreneurs and then we'll be opening up the floor to questions. So if you've got any questions for Andrew or any of the guys who are coming up next, please do post them in the chat um, and we'll take those questions afterwards. Also, any questions you've got for me, obviously, as well. Um, uh, Toby, would you like to go second? Is that okay if I come to you now? Um, yeah, sure. Um, first of all, like, I just want to say that I think I'll drive is pretty cool. And like, I'm going to start driving soon. So I'm definitely going to make use of your app. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So hi, everybody. Um, my name is Toby. And I am the CEO and creative director of the literally recently launched as of July fashion um, brand. Revival and Resurrection Collective. Um, we're a sustainable conceptual brand specializing in waste utilization, natural fibers, and we have a range of social initiatives. Um, I just realized I should give you a bit about myself before I go into business, my bad. I recently just graduated as of like a week ago or two. I think the virtual graduation was two weeks ago. Um, I studied politics, international relations, and I also did a year in computer science. I also had a year abroad, all at the University of Kent, so a five-year degree. Um, yeah, so that's a bit about me. Um, in terms of how I got involved with Aspire and the Kent Business School, I think this is an important part whereby, though I'm not, um, I was never a student of the Kent Business School, I was never excluded from the access to their opportunities. Um, and um, initially how I found out about it was that someone had mentioned that, oh, if I went to um, the business school, I could get like a free business plan template. So I'm very creative, but initially something I was struggling with was how do I create a business model that I can push towards um, you know, investors and just people in general, in the sense that I had a creative idea. Um, I had, I knew how to articulate, um, articulate creatively what I wanted to do, but from a business perspective, I didn't know how to do it very well till um, my time with the business startup journey. Um, another thing about um, the business startup journey is that I didn't actually start the journey from the beginning. I actually literally messaged Rebecca and I was like, oh, I have um, a business and I'm looking for a business um, plan model. And then literally, like I think within the last three or four weeks. So that should be a point that it's never too late to hop on to any opportunity. Um, yeah. And then I just started going in. Um, I think there are ways that the journey helped me in terms of thinking about scalability, thinking about my UPIs, and just thinking about how to really bring together your points. Like, you know, there's always many amazing ideas, but there's usually ways you can condense them to 
for clarity and for easier step-by-step -step guides for how you want to get to achieve what you want to achieve. Um, yeah, so back to r &R. So we've launched in July. Um, since then, we've had five um, local um, and international magazine and newspaper coverage. Um, so I think of the out of, there's like been a popular uh, magazine. I think a lot of creators will be familiar with Guap. We were recently featured in their video magazine, um, Liberty, and then a magazine based in Nigeria called Radar Africa. Um, and we've had a lot of other, um, you know, influencers and Instagram people reach, um, promote us. So that's been really, really awesome. Um, yeah, so what we do, I'm going to drop a link to the website. I'm very sorry, I wasn't um, prepared with a presentation. But yeah, like I said, what we do is we utilize waste and how we do that is by tackling solid waste problems and changing them into wearable art. At the moment, that's via jewelry. Um, I have some pictures of art for you. Um, if I just send it to you, I'm not sure how, yeah. So I'm just gonna play some of that. Um, yeah, so that's like some of the stuff we've been able to create um, from waste. I'm also gonna put a shop link in case you see items and you want to. Um, Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Rebecca's sharing um, on Instagram. Yeah, great. Um, so in terms of, Rebecca, could, is there a way you could guide me in terms of questioning? Because I literally was told about this last night. So I'm very like, okay, I could tell you about the business, but um, what key points is it that people would like to have addressed or something like that? Um, you've done done brilliantly, Toby. As you say, I sprang this on you last night at the very last minute, and apologies for that. Um, what was your motivation in in starting the business? I think motivation is a really important thing. Okay. Yeah. So, in terms of um, motivation, after the oil industry, the fashion industry is the second largest polluter um, in terms of our environment, and as of right now we've got a lot of issues towards sustainability, but there's also issues pertaining to the fact that we have issues towards sustainability. And what motivated me was this idea of, I want to clean up waste specifically in people's personal climates. So I started with my personal climate. So I started with back home um, in Nigeria, whereas, you know, some of these, um, pieces of jewelry has been made from waste that I collected there um, as well as you know I've also been collecting waste from people here and what we do is we get people to um, we have bags and basically we get people to put their plastic packaging so at the moment we're only doing food packaging waste um, so there's solid plastic packaging into this bag and then there's like a quarterly collection um, and then it comes down to our studio we repurpose it we remake it um in terms of what else motivates us with i'm like personally i'm someone that's very concerned with making a positive impact in my environment and like i said that's something i want to project onto other people whereby you are so though we are recreating your ways essentially you are taking the stance to be a part of it whereby it's we're giving you the responsibility and the opportunity to store your solid waste and to let it be used and repurposed into something good um so yeah that, i think that's everything that i would say motivates what we do just the aspect of taking um the current global crisis in terms of our environment's problems and challenging that creatively through wearable art um yeah <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you, Toby. And, and just it's been so exciting to um, watch this go from a, essentially kind of a trial and an idea that you had to that, that launch, what, three weeks ago? 
an incredible yeah, publicity learned. that you've had okay. um, and the attention that you've got. It's just been hugely inspiring. I think what, what I've always taken from Toby is that she just does things. So she doesn't necessarily know about finances, but she'll go and find out and she'll say, is this right? And show it. And, and just it's, it's about that doing it and trying it. And kind of it's that Silicon Valley thing of not being afraid to fail. You know, if you don't try oh. things, then you'll never know. It might not always work out, but, but yeah, that kind of resilience and that keeping going. And you have that in spades, which is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you. And thank you for joining us at such short notice. I'm really very grateful, Toby. Thank you. Um, James, can we hop over to you now um, and just hear a little bit about uh, Stay On Route and how it came into being? Yeah, definitely. Let me just uh, share my screen. Okay. Okay, cool. Hi everyone, my name is James and I am the founder of Stay Root. Um, I am a final year student in management and now just going to my last year at the KBS and working with Aspire on my business. Here we go. So Stay Root, I'll, I'll give you an explanation about what Stay Root is and kind of what the actual business is about. Um, so the first of all, um, more than 2 million people in the UK are living with sight loss um, that's severe enough for them to not be able to drive. Um, so for, for them, um, using the train and public transport is the way of transportation. Um, but for those people who are visually impaired and blind, um, it can be incredibly stressful um, to rely on just trains as you're relying on voice announcements and especially in a crowded carriage it can be really hard to find out you know where you are and how far you've got to go. So Stone Route fundamentally is a location-based alarm system um, so when you get onto a train um, you can set an alarm of your chosen station um, and once you set the alarm you can now relax and let the alarm have all the stress and worries of knowing where you, want, where you are and how far you've got to go. So I'll quickly give you a little demo of how the app works. So you'd open up the app and it will show your location at the top of the search bar. So then you can go in and search for the station you're going to. So in this case, it's Whitstable Station. You also got your favorites as well for the turn outbound stations as well. It'll come up with recommended. You can select the railway station. It'll come up, you can press go and it comes up with all your alarm preferences. So now you can set the distance away you want to be alerted, so two miles. Um, then we've got different types of alarms you can hear. So these are usually the ones that you get on the iOS. And then you've got vibration turning on and off. And you can test the alarm, see if it's all okay, and then press okay to set it. So now it's, the screen's gone blue, that is the radius of the alarm. So when you hit that radius, the alarm will go off at the two miles. And also we have um, advertisements. So if you, for revenue streams, will have, if you're going to somewhere, you can see the location, you can see the restaurants nearby and they'll be advertised on there. So you can click on the link uh, to the restaurant and it will go straight to their, straight to their website. So why did I join Stan Root, not Stan Root, <laughs> Business Startup Journey? Um, so for me, it was kind of, at the beginning of the, my, when I first joined um, university, I was always interested in becoming a, you know, an entrepreneur and starting my own business, but I was not too sure what the idea was or how to actually start you know, my own idea. Um, it was actually on the business startup journey where I actually found the idea of Stone Root um, through one of the workshops where we talked about the ideas. Um, and then from there, I went to the, the pitching final and pitched Stone Root to the panel and came second and got the £500 investment to build the first version of the app. So that was pretty cool. Uh, as well as the £500 investment, um, I got opportunity to go to up to Canary Wolf, to the Barclays HQ, um, to the Global Entrepreneur Leadership Summit, um, hosted by Wild Hearts. Um, there, a load of the leading uh, CEOs and business leaders talk about how to be more sustainable in the, the global in a global economy, which is a really great insight considering just being a student from university. Um, as well as got to meet uh, Dame Stephanie Shirley, who was a, is a leading um, innovator in IT for women uh, in the 20th century. So that was quite cool. Um, post the startup journey, um, Aspire has also been, help, been able to help me um, build a business further. 
um, Adam and Rebecca have been able to help me develop the business app into, you know, into the now world, well, nearly going to Android now, and been able to help with advertisements and promoting the app itself. So, as well as the business startup journey, you also have the post of um, helping afterwards, which is really great. Um, another opportunity I got as well was uh, my placement year, which happened just a year ago. Um, that opportunity came up through the actual business startup journey where I met Daniel Rubin. And from there, I kind of was able to get the opportunity of working with him and the finance team um, for a year, which was a great, great opportunity just through the business startup journey. So there's other stuff as well as normal business which you can get from working with the business startup journey, which is great. Um, some interesting things that's happened since um, starting on the business. Uh, it's been picked up in the media. Um, Heart FM was one of the big ones that came to KBS and interviewed me. And I heard myself on the radio, which is quite cool, um, as well as Kent Live and Railway Age. So there's some interesting things that could happen possibly if you develop the, your bit idea and it's something that could be picked up by the media, which is quite, quite cool and interesting. So that's stay on route. I um, hope everything's understandable and all good. Um, if any questions, please let me know in the comments or look at my uh, Instagram and just direct message me. Um, that'll be all good. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. That's um, fantastic. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, just to hear about how, how far that um, idea has come. And I remember where we were when stay on route was born as an idea. We were in Lecture Theatre 2 and you were sitting with, with a fellow student and we, we had Joe in, didn't we, that day? Yeah. And we were talking about problem solving and um, we wondered over what are you guys talking about. It's like, oh, the problem of traveling for visually impaired people. It's like that. This is amazing. And it's just gone from, from that conversation that you had with someone to being an actual thing that we can actually download. And it's not just for visually impaired people. You know, I fall asleep on the train all the time. I need this in my life. We should have yeah. done a poll. How, how many times have we fallen asleep on the train? <laughs> Where did you end up? Um, brilliant. Um, so we've got um, time for some questions. If um, you would uh, like to post them in the chat or you can put your hand up, that's absolutely fine either way. Um, yeah, so does anyone have any questions for us today? Okay, so we've got some questions here. What skills have you developed since starting up your own business? Um, yeah, that's really important because it's not just about being in business, it's the entrepreneurial skills which you develop at the same time. Um, uh, I could talk about problem solving, research, creative solutions, resilience, which came out top in our poll of being a, you know, a key skill for entrepreneurship. But you guys, what do you um, think is the key skill that you've taken so far from your business journey? I don't know. Toby, can I come to you first? Um, I think a huge part of business is definitely resilience. So, for instance, I'm going to give the most recent example. Um, I had actually initially planned to launch my business in June, and I had a strategy around that. Um, and I think something that affected me, but lots of other small businesses, was... COVID-19 because there's lots of different things for instance when you're running so I'm obviously in the fashion industry when you're running a fashion industry um, when you're running a fashion business um, as opposed to like if it's a digital app or something you need to think about your suppliers where are they based how are things getting to you you need to now quickly be able to one be like okay this has gone sideways but what way am I going to rectify this what are like and I think it's also good to have multiple ways of how you're going to rectify it because the first way you may think may not be the way and you need to constantly be able to bounce back and be like all right this is going to happen and actually you know I kept going um during this COVID period and <clears throat> I created a whole new way of getting exposure and stuff like that and it worked you know like even recently I was telling Rebecca as of, like I think day before yesterday I had a an artist that signed to Motown Records asking to use one of my pieces in their music videos. So that's what I've said that my whole market strategy changed. And with that, new opportunities came. Whereas there were things before that I like the way I've seen the way I thought it was going to go was not there. So I would say resilience is the most important 
um, you really always need to know how to bounce back, you know, trust your source. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that, that, as you say, COVID, I mean, apart from being a, an awful, dreadful situation affecting the planet right now, um, threw a curveball to business um, and that ability to adapt and change your plans, um, not just because of COVID, but because of, of, of all the things that can happen that we, that we can't predict is, is really important. That, that resilience to keep going, but also that ability, ability to go, OK, not this way, then that way or that way or this way. What about you, James? What's been the, the key thing you've taken? I think one of the big things I've developed on over the years is like my confidence in just general being in the, you know, in the business world and be able to talk to people who, you know, at the beginning, if you think of them, they maybe they might find them intimidating and being such a high figure, but being having the opportunity to do these kind of things, you feel like you're much more confident to go out there, put yourself out there. And from there, you can kind of have that opportunities that come back to you and kind of help you with your business. So, it's definitely one of the things that I've definitely developed a long way is how I've been more, more confident to go and talk to people, message people and see how that would, you know, react to myself. So definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that's really interesting about confidence because it is about going out there and doing stuff and learning from that and then kind of feeling the fear, but doing it anyway. That, that's a really interesting point, James. Andrew, I'll just come to you because I, I love this. This is a great question. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll just underline both of those points, really. Um, yeah, essentially, you know, now that I have a team around me, which is such an exciting uh, prospect, because also they're, they're in our age category as well. So to get young minds, um, to, to, to provide leadership to them is such a new experience for me. Uh, I never thought I'll be leading a team uh, at just 23 years old. So that's, that's such an exciting uh, part of all of this, and I wouldn't have had this opportunity without Aspire. Um, yeah, and the whole idea of co correlating with them, um, and then yet, yeah, as you know, as James mentioned, you know, uh, gathering more confidence when you speak to new groups of people, whether they're our age or you know people more senior to you, um, it's been such an interesting experience, especially during actually this COVID time, because every meeting that I've had has now been on on, on a computer. So, you know, to learn all of these skills is is such a is such a great great um, attribute I would say to have um, and it's something that definitely you can take on um, and I, I'm always learning every day that's that's something for sure that is, is going on that that's the whole idea of startups there's always something to gain every single day so skills are are going to infinitely continue to develop yeah it has been an incredible journey for you as you say a team at 23 that's that's pretty good going well done <laughs> um somebody's asked uh, if they can be involved in the various opportunities and inspired without an idea and i would say absolutely yes um james you when you joined you, you didn't have that idea I and mean, it came fairly on in the program for, but for some people they'll come through the program through the workshops maybe even one-to-ones and mentoring just still exploring things just looking for different opportunities because it's all about timing you might not have that idea then but once you have the knowledge and you have the skills then when you find that opportunity then, then you're ready to go and we're always going to be here for you it's not just like like james said he did the business startup journey but actually the real journey began at the end of the business startup journey in terms of developing a stay on route and i think it's probably the same andrew and toby that we're still here to support you um, as graduates as well as as students. Um, so uh, this is a nice one, I hope. Um, somebody's asked, what's been the highlight of your career journey so far? Um, what about you, Andrew? What's been the highlight? It's been a few, hey? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the, I think one of the most, uh, one of the events which really built my confidence was actually winning the business startup journey. That was such an, such an awesome, uh, first the opportunity to compete with, you know, I think there were 12 other finalists or something that day, uh, just seeing the variety of ideas um, and then, you know, seeing, seeing the judges choose my, my ideas as, as the most competitive was such a, such a, it's, it built so much confidence in me and it really kickstart uh, me, you know, to really set this idea off um, to get to this stage where we're at. Um, and that obviously we haven't begun our business journey in itself yet, but you know, working with, for example, app developers, um, seeing the app actually coming into light now, um, and you know, having my team test it, it's all, it's all, it's all becoming tangible and it's all becoming real, mm -hmm. and uh, that's such an exciting journey, part of the journey mm -hmm. so far. And of course, you know, being part of Santander, 
their their um, their amazing you know uh, insights and all their presentations and webinars that they do. Um, it really ensures that you cover you know the A to Z of the whole of the whole uh, business startup business process. Um, so yeah, the, so many highlights <laughs> I would say rather than just one. Yeah, absolutely. That um, Emerging Entrepreneurs Programme of Santander is really, really exciting. It's a really great relationship that we have with them um, in terms of being able to offer funding for business, but also their network and their support and the people that they can leave her in to, to give advice. It's just absolutely incredible. It's a really good opportunity. James, what about you? What would be your highlight so far? I think my highlight so far is really just that first day of um, launching the app and making, seeing that on the app store um, as you say like from the beginning of just the idea in that in the lecture theatre to it being a physical thing in the it's such a journey and then to see it actually on there is just like a wow like a, one of those moments where you're like okay wow that's kind of happened kind of thing so that's quite a cool cool little thing that happened and as well as that I feel like the, the other thing I mentioned was the Global Entrepreneur Leadership Summit where I went to go and talk here about you know all the sustainability from all the big leaders and then the Barclays CEO was there talking and it was always kind of in like one of those thing, opportunities which you don't that you rarely get but um, it was a really good experience to just have that inspiration and motivation just to continue like, being more sustainable and all that so yeah. yeah. One of the things we're looking at to do in the next academic year, so coming up, is to go down to the IBM lab where they kind of create and innovate all their technology. Um, it should be a really, really great day out. So, yeah, hopefully that will, you'll come and join us and uh, it'll be another highlight to add to those <laughs> lists. But thank you for sharing that. Toby, whose earrings I've got, I've got a pair of Toby's earrings and they're absolutely beautiful. I forgot to wear them today, but I should, <laughs> I could highly recommend you ordering them. Toby, what about you? What's Absolutely. the highlight for you? Oh, um, so in terms of my career journey or oh, like, you know, I literally launched my brand three weeks ago and like I would say launching a brand and having sales already during COVID is a big achievement. Um, I think in terms of my career in fashion as a whole, um, I think for me, like I would say my highlight and this is a constant highlight for me. I think it's how far I'm able to go and get due to my confidence because like, I mean, I think not coming from like having studied a fashion degree or fashion related degree, but never letting that stop me and seeing how far I can go. Um, and like when I'm even thinking about other people that I now have, it's like, you know, I think that's really cool. But I think if I'm going to pinpoint a highlight over these last three weeks, it was definitely having a stylist reach out to me to put my jewelry on a Motown um, artist. Like that was... I was really cool like Motown is such a big record label and I was like whoa okay so yeah I think that's been a highlight for me yeah that's absolutely fantastic I can't wait to see where that that takes um our, our collective to kind of next level exposure it's going to be really cool um somebody's asked in the chat how long did it take you from uh, having the business idea to getting your first order I think you kind of just asked answered that but the idea was a long time before launch hey Wait, um, like she means how long did I have my idea before getting yeah, my first from having the idea to the, to the first order? So it's what, what's, what's the time period between having an idea and then, apps, and then executing it and um, making some money? Okay. Um, yeah, so with that, um, r and really became polished, I would say, within the last year. And then obviously, you know, I finalised stuff in through the business startup journey um but the thing i did is that within this last year while i was polishing up r and i built following around me um and i already built exposure so i would say that's probably a reason why my, there wasn't that much of a gap between like i had people ask before i had launched i had people asking me if they could buy stuff or when is it coming out stuff like that so there was already a hype um and that's another thing i would say like if you're going to earn a brand one thing you need to like do is like create genuine hype because when you have genuine customers they will always be your customers and i think that's important you need that base um so yeah like literally i had orders the same day like even like on the day of my launch my website rejected payments due to technical faults but even with that the next day um and the next morning some people came back to revive their carts and some people um um 
some new people came on so it's like you know just yeah I think it, it's the execution how well did you execute your idea what did you do in order to lead up to the execution of your idea um, I don't think there's any exact answer for that it's more of what are you going to do to ensure that your first order isn't sh um, sh is shortly after your launch yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I think that the answer is always different for every business um, uh, between idea and execution. Some things you can get to the marketplace very quickly. Other things are going to take a longer time in development. Um, and I'm thinking, Andrew and James, that's been the case with you guys because you had to go around kind of building the whole back end to everything. Yeah, um, I, would, I, definitely, I definitely would say like um, for me, it was, it was definitely the... Um, you know, there's the models and creating all the beta tests and all that before you go out and test it in the public and then you go and actually develop it and then you'd launch it. So for my app, it did take about a year or so from the actual on a bit of paper of like a, like a flow chart um, to an actual app myself. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't add on to that. Yeah, definitely the app creation process is definitely the longest part of the whole process. I'm sure James knows the struggles in doing that. Um, but also, also um, we've actually had to shift our, the way we market our apps, for example, to the instructor market, because we conducted some market research with around uh, probably 500 to 600 instructors um, around the UK, having talked to them on the phone. And we devised initially a, a problem which they didn't have. So we kind of had to uh, shift our, our model in a way that we then addressed the issue that they really did have, um, and now with our app is actually based on their on their problems. So, you know, there's nothing wrong. You know, everyone's so optimistic with their with their business that they don't actually see reality, um, and that's something that definitely I, you know, we experienced as a team. But after having spoken to the market and actually saying, oh, actually, this is the real issue that they have then we address that. Um, so there's nothing wrong with, you know, creating a shift. Uh, that's something I want to emphasize. I think that's, that's always going to be a part in your journey where you will have to shift your model in any business you're in. Um, otherwise you won't survive. Uh, and so that's, that's definitely something which is part of this journey. Yeah, I think that's a really important point, Andrew, that um, understanding the real pain as it were, that your user or your customer has and then creating a solution to that rather than kind of prejudging what that situation might be and that's a lot of what the business startup journey is about in particular is that um, opportunity to really understand the problem to speak to users to speak to potential customers to make sure you're crafting the right solution but it's an ongoing journey it's always going to be a conversation that you're having um, so we're nearly at the end of our hour together and I'd just like to say a huge thank you to our three graduate and student entrepreneurs for joining us today. Um, I just love hearing these stories about what you've done. It's so inspiring um, to hear about your journey and to be a part of it and to be an ongoing part of it. Um, for everyone else, thank you again for joining us. It's been brilliant to um, have so many people on the call today. Um, and if I just uh, share my screen just for one last time. They're, they're all important details to keep in touch with these guys and to keep in touch with me. Please, we want to hear from you. Don't wait till September to come and say hi. Drop me a line now. Um, start telling me about your ideas or, or what your hopes are for when you join Kent Business School. So it'd be great to hear from you. So do, do keep in touch and, and do give these guys a follow because um, they're really, really great young businesses, startup businesses.